Hello there. Hello, my friend. What's that on your face? Is everything all right in your patriarchal reality? Well, not really. That's why I asked you to meet on the net. I can't show up in our usual meeting space between parallel realities anymore. What's happened? We're dealing with pandemic and major crisis. Pandemic? What is that? <laughs> Not pandemic. <laughs> pandemic. When the virus is taking over the whole world. Don't you have pandemics in your matriarchal reality? Mm, no. Never? Not that I know of, and I will be 88 this year. Really? You still look amazing, by the way. Thank you. <laughs> you see, our immune system and preventive health care is the number one priority in Land of Good. We believe that health problems occur only when there is a disharmony between the rational and the spiritual side. Of the sick individual? Of the whole society. One individual is always a reflection of the whole society. If problems secure, there must be an unhappy cluster somewhere. And the great mother, the alma mater of our world, goes right to the source of that disharmony. She works with purifying energy of Mother Earth. When will your world start using this rich, powerful magnetic forces? I don't know. At the moment, rich and powerful are pharmaceutical companies which sell us medicines. What do you mean by sell? We pay money for it. Ah, there is that money again, an unknown concept in our world. What was it again? We work hard, mostly under the stressful circumstances, to make money, to be able to pay for medical care. Wait a minute. You work yourself to illness in order to make money to heal this illness? Is it not easier to stop working so hard? <laughs> no, this is the ethics of our world. Hard work is the secret of any success. And your mother allows that? All our mothers encourage that. Our system exists due to the people's labor. It's hard to believe that your mothers deliberately encourage labor that eventually sickens or even kills her children. I hope they as well encourage to follow the path of mastering the art of happiness. <laughs> the art of happiness doesn't sound sufficient enough to us. You can spread happiness on your bread, can you? Besides, you are not supposed to feel happy all the time. Why not? It's unrealistic. Really? Of course. Without feeling bad, you can't know what feel good is, can you? If you feel good all the time, it becomes normal, and normal can't make you happy. But if that normal does you good, would you therefore feel good? I suppose. Then the mission is accomplished, isn't it? Do you feel happy all the time? You see, because we study the art of happiness from the early age, we know that there are different stages of well-being. For example, happy is mostly event-related. You are happy when something happened that made you feel good, while Cheerful appears mostly in relation to others. Joy, on another hand, comes from the inside. It's something you learn, cultivate and sustain. Above that, it's not that negative events and emotions do not happen in land of good. It's about how to deal with them and your advantage. That's why it's the art of happiness which is the big part of our emotional education from the early age. You have emotional education at schools? <laughs> That's funny. What do you study? How to cry professionally? <laughs> <laughs> yes, that's why we don't get sick. We know how to manage feelings and emotions. How did it go with your inner being, your well-being during this pandemic? Well... Uh... We were forced to go on isolation. It's awful. 
how is to be with yourself so awful? It's not about that. It's about our freedom doing whatever and whenever we want in social life, sports, going out, traveling, shopping, globalization. What we had most fun with is taken away. Mm, you know what? Looks like the goddess is trying to tell you something. Who is the goddess? The other half of God. Oh, no, 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 no. Don't even go there. We believe God is one and only. No wonder your world is so unstable. It's out of balance on fundamental level. You live only outside of yourself. The goddess is inviting you to go in to the inner journey. Isn't it a wonderful itinerary? Sitting down, doing nothing, you call itinerary? Yes, the journey in your head is an astral traveling into creation, hedonism, self-love and collective consciousness. Can't you see? The goddess is trying to protect you from ruining yourself and her planet. She gave you a first warning like a good mother does. We don't see it this way. We actually think we don't deserve this pandemic. We all were working so hard. Working on what? An economic growth towards no poverty for everybody. During our last conversation, almost three years ago, you mentioned this goal. So I guess your world is poverty-free by now. Actually, it became worse because of the crisis. Do you blame crisis? Of course. Due to the crisis and pandemic, we are increasingly moving away from our goals. So do you consider crisis something what just happens to you? Where do you think does it come from? Uh, circumstances, development flaws. And who creates circumstances? Um, Whose development is it? Ours. So who is the source? I know you want me to say we are. I just like to create an awareness that everything what happens in the society always comes from one same source the collective consciousness. If the world society has a virus, then it's an ill society that needs to be cured or dismantled. Mother Nature has many ways to dismiss an ill society. Watch out, you've received your first warning. Should we be afraid? Fear is a negative emotion based on low vibrations. I don't think it will be of any help. What might help is the shift to the higher vibrations. <laughs> I see myself walking into parliament full of politicians saying, gentlemen, to save the world, let us change our vibrations. <laughs> <laughs> I see your point. It feels like parliament is probably the last place to go if you're looking for the true change. Politicians in your reality are there to support the system and by all means not for to change it. If everybody will be good, what there will be left for politicians to do? Think about it. Their biggest fear is to lose control over your minds and wallets. That's why people of your reality are constantly being put in some kind of trouble or struggle to make them think that they can't survive without their governments. But in fact, your conscience coming from the right upbringing and education is already enough to guide you to peace and prosperity. So what you really need is a mother and a father and everyone associated with them. It's a bit surprising because we believe that politicians are here to take care of their people. That's why a helicopter view from the outsider is useful sometimes. I can see what you don't see. What else do you see? Change is coming and the change is always good. But in the beginning, it's a chaos. 
Are you getting ready for it? Oh, oh we don't like chaos. It's because you are disconnected from the goddess. You don't understand the cycles of the mother nature that also include destruction and therefore chaos. How do you prepare for a chaos? Is it even possible? See it as a puzzle. When you just open the box, you see only broken pieces. It's a total chaos. Is it a drama to you? No, it's a game, a challenge. It's fun. Fun is highly vibrational. Do you get it? If you could find a way to look at your situation as a puzzle, therefore as fun, you would shift from low vibration of fear and struggle to high vibration of creation. Then the puzzle of 8 billion pieces just fall on its place, practically by themselves. Isn't it marvelous? Is this how you manage peace and order in land of good? We believe peace and order should come from within and not because the police is watching you. We get lessons of peace at school. We also have the great mother who holds master degree and is a genius in solving any kind of issues. So peace is a permanent state in land of good. Peace comes from the heart, not from politicians. Oh, that's just beautiful. I wonder why in our reality, our inner significance is so insignificant. It will change. It is changing already. And that's so good. If your reality is going through the major crisis, it means there is something major what needs your immediate attention. If your city life, consuming habits, traveling, globalization were brought under your attention, it means you have to change it in order to carry on. Did you do it? Not really. We all want to go back to the way it was ASAP. Then expect a second warning soon. Well, we made some adjustments, though. We announced the new prosperity goals to achieve by the year 2050. But you don't live in 2050. You live now. What did change now? Mm, not much. We need time. The problem is we are very dependent on our economy which based on capitalism and consumerism, it damages our environment. Some say beyond to repair. The underlying problem here is that there is never enough time and effort to recover the damage that we do, not only to the nature, but also to our bodies and souls. The damage that caused by wars, conflicts, childhood traumas, absence of love and kindness. We never really fix the broken hearts. We just go on driven by revenge and fear. And the worst is that we call it normal because everybody has arrows in their hearts. Mm, now I uh, start to understand why you have received your first warning. Ripping off your planet, your bodies and hearts is not normal. It's a cosmic crime. You should listen to the goddess and give your full attention to her warning. I'm afraid it's impossible. Our economy will collapse. Your economy will collapse anyway, because it's out of balance and it's destroying your home planet. If you would reunite with the goddess or mother nature, she would offer you much better solutions. But you're not planning to, do you? So be ready for the next warning of the goddess, which will probably be more severe than the first one. And if we won't get her message. As a good mother does, she will give you a third warning. 
after that, she will one by one take your favorite toys away. She already does. She took our sport, going out, <laughs> vacations. These are just entertainment for the lazy ego. I'm afraid it will be something like your vehicles, houses, provision, and probably your number one toy of today, the internet. If you won't get the message by then, I hope you have the plan B for electricity. Uh, no, that's actually our biggest fear. To lose electricity would mean to lose everything. There, there. A healthy young man says that electricity is everything for him. In land of good, you are everything for you. If you have you, you can have anything. I'll pray that Mother Nature won't put your reality under the time out when she will ignore you because then you are on your own. Then you will see what is really important. No God will be able to save you. I don't think we will have a solution on such a short term. Are we trapped? Do you think the Great Mother would have a solution? She always has a solution. Maybe she could help us. What would she do? Well, I think probably...